Early recognition and treatment of acute injury may prevent deterioration in renal function to the point where renal replacement therapy is necessary. Small changes in serum creatinine and short periods of oliguria should be recognised and acted upon. This may mean treatment as detailed in the following slides, or more frequent monitoring, or a combination of the two. Fundamental treatment of acute kidney injury involves an ABC approach. Many patients admitted to ICU have respiratory and cardiovascular problems, which must be addressed as a life-saving priority, and which, of course, may also cause renal injury. Patients with sepsis should have intravenous antibiotics as early as possible, and certainly within the first hour after recognition, as this improves mortality. Any nephrotoxic drugs should be stopped. Aminoglycoside antibiotics and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are common. Fluid management can be difficult. You want to ensure adequate intravascular volume while avoiding fluid overload. It's important to recognise the point beyond which further fluid resuscitation is counterproductive. Vasopressor infusion is often necessary to maintain adequate mean arterial pressure in patients with sepsis. Consideration should be given to the patient's normal mean arterial pressure, as patients with underlying hypertension need a higher pressure to maintain organ perfusion. The underlying cause of acute kidney injury should be established and treated, and renal replacement therapy started if criteria for this are fulfilled. There are no specific treatments for acute kidney injury beyond supportive therapy and treatment of the underlying cause. A variety of drugs and strategies have been used to improve outcomes from acute kidney injury, and some of these are shown on the slide. None have been shown to have any benefit in clinical trials. Renal ultrasound should be done in any patient in whom obstruction is suspected. Most critically ill patients have acute kidney injury secondary to sepsis, and renal ultrasound is not usually necessary in these patients. Renal replacement therapy should be started if indicated. Uh, indications include fluid overload, which is unresponsive to diuretics, hyperkalemia of greater than 6.5 millimoles per litre, a severe metabolic acidosis, continued oligoanuria and biochemical deterioration despite adequate resuscitation and supportive treatment, and symptomatic uremia, including encephalopathy, pruritus and bleeding.